What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today we're taking a look at the sneaker releases in the first half of January 2020, the first sneaker release video of the year. Not as exciting as I was hoping, but it is what it is. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't watch because there are some releases that are interesting. If you've never seen one of my Sitter Cell videos before, basically what I do is I take a look at the sneakers releasing in the first half or second half of a given month. I let you know what I think about each one of the sneakers dropping and whether I think each one of these shoes are gonna sit on shelves or sell out immediately. All the Sitter Cell ratings that I put on sneakers in these videos are based on my own personal opinions and experience. So if you're gonna buy a sneaker just because I said it's gonna sell, don't, that's a stupid reason to do that. So just sit back, enjoy, and take it with a grain of salt. I am going to start this video off a little bit later than the beginning of January, just because we've already passed the beginning of January, so it doesn't make sense. But without further ado, let's jump right into things. So starting things off on January 3rd, we've got the Reebok Question Mid in gray suede. I've really liked the fact that Reebok has been retroing some of their classic sneakers like the Question Mid, and obviously I'm an Allen Iverson fan. This wasn't even on purpose, so that's pretty cool. The Reebok Question Mid is a pretty comfortable sneaker, and I also think it looks really, really great. And I think in this sort of gray suede makeup, it also has a much more premium feel. From what I can tell, the suede looks super plush, and I'm actually really excited about this sneaker. No, it's not something that I might run out and grab on release day, but it's something that I might pick up when it hits the sale racks, if it hits the sale racks. Even though people online seem to be really excited about this sneaker, there just doesn't seem to be enough hype to make this sneaker sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving it a sit. Also dropping on the third, we've got the Nike Zoom Kobe 5 Pro Tro in the Chaos colorway. Nike has been steadily going through the Kobe silhouettes and Pro Troing them, which I think is a really cool thing to do. Pro Tro means performance retro, which means that they've actually upgraded the internals of the sneaker to make it much more of a modern basketball sneaker than it was when it first released. But the best part about Pro Tros is that they try and keep the overall look of the sneaker exactly the same as the original. So because of that, you're able to get your nostalgia fix while still killing people on the court. Not so much me because I suck at basketball, but for some people who are good. The Kobe 5 Pro Tro Chaos is a great looking shoe, and because it is the first colorway of a Kobe 5 Pro Tro to release, I think there is a good chance that this sneaker may sell out. Then moving on to January 4th, we've got the grade school release of the Air Jordan 3 Barely Grape Hyper Crimson. This colorway is okay, it's all right. I think if you have a daughter who really loves pink and fuchsias and can fit in a grade school size sneaker, grab it for them, or maybe even a little dude who really wants to rock pink sneakers, I don't know. This shoe is fine, I don't have a problem with it, it's just not for me, not that I could fit it anyway. Just like with some of the other grade school releases that come out in sort of random colorways, I just don't see this sneaker selling out. Then on January 7th, we've got the Nike LeBron 17 in infrared. This might actually be my favorite LeBron 17 colorway. I think it's up there with the Lakers colorway. Even though they were both general releases, they both look really good. This shoe comes in a mostly black makeup with some red accents around the heel and in the air unit. And I think overall, it's a super clean look. I mean, you can't really go wrong with black and red. My favorite part about this shoe are the little red swirls hidden in the knit posit around the heel of the shoe. It's such a subtle detail, but it looks so good when it all comes together. The LeBron 17 as a silhouette just isn't for me though. It's not something I could wear casually, and it's not a shoe that I really prefer to play in. However, if you like the LeBron 17 and need another pair or just haven't picked up a pair yet, this shoe is awesome and I definitely recommend grabbing it. That said, I do think it will be a GR colorway, which means there's gonna be tons of pairs to go around, so for that reason, I think it's gonna sit. Then continuing on to January 9th, we've got the Jordan Why Not 0.3 in the family colorway. The Why Not 0.3 looks a lot like a pair of Pumas that I got a couple months back. I can't remember exactly which pair it was, but when I first saw this sneaker, I thought it was a pair of Pumas. That's not a diss though, I'm just being honest, that's just what it reminds me of. I mean, it's obviously not copied from that shoe, but it just looks pretty similar. With that being said, I do think that the Jordan Why Not 0.3 is a pretty decent looking sneaker, especially in this black, white, and sort of gold accented colorway, and I actually like it a lot better than the 0.2s. Westbrook's Why Not line is one of Jordan's more budget-friendly sneakers, and I think because of that, it's actually very accessible to a lot of different people. Honestly, I don't really have anything else to say about this sneaker. I think it's fine. I think it's a good-looking shoe. I just haven't had a chance to play in it, so I don't know anything about it other than that. And if you're in the market for a new pair of Westbrooks, great. I think this is a good sneaker to grab. And if you're trying to grab it, you shouldn't have a very hard time because I do think this sneaker will probably sit. And then rounding off the ninth, we've got the Air Max 90 OG in the Volt colorway. This OG Volt colorway is releasing sort of in honor of the 30th anniversary of the Air Max 90, which I think is pretty cool. What I personally would love to see is an OG infrared colorway because I have a pair from 2015, which is beat to hell at this point, and I really need a new pair. The Volt colorway is also very clean. It's pretty much the same thing as the infrared colorway, except with the infrared switched out for Volt. And if you're an Air Max 90 fan or just love those Volt hits, this is a great sneaker to go with. Even though the shoe will probably hit a nostalgic chord with 
a lot of collectors, I just don't think there's enough hype behind it to really make it sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving it a sit. Then moving on to January 10th, we've got the Nike Freak 1 in total orange and dynamic yellow. I'm not totally sure why the colorway is total orange dynamic yellow because if you look at the shoe, that kind of looks like green. Nike always has a way of putting colors on the box that aren't really that obvious on the sneaker. I don't know why they do that, but this is definitely a prime example of that. That said, the sneaker looks fine. I don't love it. I'm not going to be grabbing it. It also isn't orange, so they lied. Um, but other than that, it's a good sneaker, and if you're looking for a Freak 1, go out and grab it. Do I think this green Freak 1 will sell out? Probably not. Also dropping on the 10th, we've got the Concepts Nike Kyrie 6 Kepri. Continuing with their Egypt-themed collaboration, Boston-based sneaker boutique Concept is collaborating with Nike once again. Kind of interesting because Kyrie is no longer with the Celtics, but uh, it's still cool to see this collab drop, and I love the first one so much, I think this one's also going to be pretty solid. Kepri Ra is apparently an Egyptian god that represents the rising sun, and so because of that, this shoe comes in sort of a pink rising sun colorway. I don't like the colorway as much as last year's version, but I don't think it's bad. What I am kind of annoyed by is that the grade school colorway, in my opinion, is better than the adult colorway, but it is what it is. The shoe has some pretty cool Egypt-themed accents and will no doubt be super limited. What I'm interested to know, though, is whether this sneaker will come in sort of a special box like the original. Regardless, I think it's a dope sneaker, and I definitely see it selling out. Then, on January 11th, we've got the Clot Nike Air Force One Low in rose gold silk. Jordan Brand surprised me last month and blessed me with this insane package which ended up being the Edison Chen or Clot Air Jordan 1 Mids. And since then, I've been obsessed with the recent Clot collaborations, especially with Nike. Other than the Jordan 1 Mids, I don't have any other Clot Nike collaborations and I'm really looking forward to trying to grab this pair for myself. Obviously, one of the main features of the shoe is the fact that the silk or the material on the top of the sneaker can actually be torn off or worn off so that you can see a colorful leather underneath. I'm not sure what the color of the leather is underneath the fabric on this color way, but I'd be excited to find out. But I can only find out if I actually bought a pair. Which, to be honest, won't be easy because these shoes are pretty limited. And just like all the other Clot Nike collaborations that have dropped recently, this shoe will definitely sell. And then after that, we've got the Air Jordan 13 Reverse He Got Game. This shoe might not actually be a reverse he got game, it just kind of looks like that's what they're going for. These 13s feature a primarily black upper with some white accents around the midfoot and around the heel, and overall, it's a pretty clean looking Air Jordan 13. Is it anything special? Meh. Not really, but it's still a good looking pair of sneakers. And I think if you're looking for a great pair of 13s that are easy to rock, this is a great way to go. However, I do think there will be a lot of pairs of these available, and for that reason, I think this shoe is probably going to sit. After that, we've got the Adidas Dawn Issue 1 in Solar Red. This orange and black Issue 1 is a pretty good looking shoe, and if you're looking for a new pair of Adidas basketball sneakers, this is a great way to go. However, it is just kind of a different colorway of the DON Issue 1. I like it, there's nothing wrong with it, I just think it's more of the same, and for that reason, I think it's gonna sit. And then, rounding off the 11th, we've got two different colorways of a brand new Pharrell silhouette, the Adidas Pharrell Futurecraft 4D. In my opinion, this is a classic case of this shoe should have dropped two years ago. And this shoe would have sold out like crazy and resold for crazy money back then, but I don't know. I just don't think it has the hype behind it anymore. Adidas has finally decided to mash up one of their most hyped up brands, the Pharrell brand, with one of their most hyped up technologies, the 4D technology. However, again, I just think they did it too late. The sneaker itself looks great. It comes in both an olive colorway and a purple colorway, and I think overall, there's nothing wrong with it. I do think the price point is a little bit high at 400 bucks. I think that's a lot of money to be spending on a pair of sneakers which aren't incredibly comfortable. And again, it's just a case of too little, too late. I just wish they'd drop this shoe sooner. So honestly, I could see this shoe going either way. If it's super limited, then yes, I could see the shoe selling out. If it's not super limited, it probably will sit on shelves. Maybe not everywhere, maybe it'll sell out online, but I bet if you go to an Adidas flagship store in a big city like New York, you'll probably be able to find a full size run. So with that being said, I really think I'm gonna have to go with the sit. And then moving on to January 15th, we've got the Air Max 90 in the Chinese New Year colorway. Obviously, because it's the 30th anniversary of the Air Max 90, we're going to be getting a lot of Air Max 90s this year, which I think is a great thing. And some of them are going to be hits, like the OG Neons, and some of them are going to be misses, like the Chinese New Year 2020s. This shoe really could have easily been a slam dunk, but instead they decided to go with metallic accents, pink, white, and also red. I don't hate it, I just don't think it's very well thought out. I feel like they could have done a much better job and made this shoe much more exciting, but Instead, they kind of phoned it in, went with some red, went with some silver, threw some pink in there, and just kind of left it at that. And because of that, I don't think anyone's going to be interested. So for that reason, I'm giving it a sit. 
And then finally, rounding off the list, on January 16th, we've got the Nike Kyrie 6 in black and red. This is a black and red Kyrie 6. It is decent, it looks fine, nothing too exciting about it. It's a Kyrie 6. If you're looking for an on-court shoe and you really like the Kyrie 6, you can't go wrong with black and red. I just think it's a standard GR shoe, and because of that, it's not gonna sell out. And with that, we wrap up the sneaker releases in the first half of January 2020. Now I would love to know your thoughts on these releases and whether any of these sneakers caught your eye. So let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.